What happened to you singing? One, two, three. Ha <laughs> ha. Welcome back. Welcome back. When did you fall in love with hip hop? I have loved you from the first time I laid eyes on you. And I love you still. <laughs> You ain't feeling what I got to say. I can write it, ball it up, and sew it away. They ain't hit record and let the beat play. I got 86 to join, drop another today. Even if you ain't feeling what I got to say, I can write it, ball it up, and sew it away. They ain't hit record and let the beat play. I got 86 to join. Hello, world. We're back. Welcome to the Electric Relaxation Show. I am your host. Mr. Galloway, I'm with my man that needs no introduction, the man, the legend, the myth. What's happening, bro? What's good, what's good, what's good? How you feeling? I can't call it, I can't call it. Today I want to touch on this song that um, that I just did. Of course, you previewed. And um, it's called Disposable. Like I was saying, it's an ongoing theme with me with the rest of my um, music on SoundCloud. Check it out if you get a chance. Disposable Entertainment 1 through 3. But pretty much is a multi-layered song where I talk about different topics inside of this one topic. I feel like we're disposable. I feel like um, the art form can be disposable in a sense. So I'm going to start breaking down some of the lyrics of the song. And then, you know, we can go through it and have a discussion about it. Sounds like a plan. Okay. My first line, I say I'm more Langston than Shakespeare. So pretty much what I'm saying in that line is I, I feel like the art form itself, and I'm talking about hip hop. I don't think, I, I feel like it's not regarded like a, uh, a painting, like from, from Picasso. You know what I mean? I don't think it's revered like Shakespeare is. You know, so I'm really taking a jab at that. What's your thoughts on that? Um, you know, for me, I would think it would be something like societal deniability. It's not given its proper due because if they give it its proper due, you would have to give a culture, a society, a sector of people their props so to speak for what they have and what they've created we've had many conversations before i've told you that you know just dialogue language mm, right you know you have a sector of people that went out and stole that and tried to make it their own so with us if they kind of give us that credit to making rap and art form then it's kind of validating that yes we do have contributions to society which we already know but you know they don't want to put it out there and publicize it because around the world you know we have a certain image that they have to uphold so to do that it would just it would kind of say you know if you delve into it it's kind of in, it's kind of ingenious you know mm. at harvard at harvard they teach courses on hip-hop they mm. have professors that literally break down the lyrics just to show you the intricacies of how masterful and skillful some of these lyricists are. So for them to do that, we couldn't be deemed as unintelligent and lazy because they do think that rap is a lazy art form, so to speak, because it does, they think that it doesn't take any brain power or any skill to to make a beat. Like if mm. they actually look, if they actually looked into what made what, what it takes to make a beat. You will see it's not just as easy as putting two records on a turntable and, and scratching and spinning it around. Um, metaphors, they don't they don't want to give us the credit for it. So they try to take the easy way out and say it's lazy, it's not gonna do anything. But unfortunately for them, it, it did a 180 musically. Mm. 
and it mm. dominates the world now. Now you have your sectors of rock, jazz, and all that other stuff, but hip hop controls the world. They do it in advertising. They do it mm -hmm. in shows. You have people making videos now. You know what I'm saying? Taken away from our culture. But yet and still, it's the lazy one. One day, possibly, can't say when, it'll get the recognition and the due that, that it's justified. But you know me personally. I can't I can't really say if it will, especially with these new rappers, because to me, it's kind of like, you know, how we say they taking our people back. To me, these new rappers are taking hip hop back generations just mm -hmm. by the things that they're doing. Now, some of the stuff that they're doing is fire. I can't lie. You know, mm -hmm. it's fire. But a lot of the stuff that they're, they're doing now is really basic and simple. Mm. They mm. steal old songs. They're stealing old lyrics. They're stealing mm. old beats. And then mm. they just get up on a record. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you know, that's how I yeah. feel about that. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny you mentioned that because it was a time where you would have uh, EPMD and then you would have a Rod Kim. Cadence is, is, is similar, but completely different. You yeah. follow what I'm getting at? You know what I mean? So, you know, then you have a Big Daddy came, but a heavy D. A mm -hmm. Slick Rick, you know, but a Dougie Fresh. Right. So, yeah, it, you know, it, it, it was not saying that they all do it, because then, you know, now today you have a J. Cole, but you have a Kendrick Lamar. So it is guys that, you know, all doing their thing and all being creative, but I definitely feel you where you're going with it. All right. I got this other ball where I say, living in illusions of freedom, warning signs like we don't even see them. So pretty much what I'm saying in that, and I, I, I really feel this way. I feel like we're in the matrix. You know, they, they make it seem like we're in the land of the free. Now, we, we do allegedly have free speech. You know, we, we should be free thinkers. You know what I mean? But then if you really think about it, our lifestyle revolves around our financial scenario. If we, we have to create some type of economic stability to live the, the life that we're accustomed to, you know what I mean, day to day. Right. So are we, are, are we really free in a sense? You know, I, to me, a free person could just be like, you know, today I'm doing this, that, and the third. But I mean, you know, from someone from a impoverished, impoverished condition all the way up to a, a, a billionaire, in order to for them to sustain their lifestyle and, 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 and live the way they deem fit, you have to go out here and, and, and make it happen. Mm hmm you, you know what I mean? So so what's your take on that? Are we free? Of course we're not free. Mm. You know, if you, I don't care where you go, what you do, you are bound by rules. Mm. No matter what nation, what country, what city, what state, you are bound by certain rules of a nation. You're bound by laws. Um, we discussed this today, even with the housing situation. You know, you own your own home. I can pay my home off tomorrow. I mm -hmm. really won't own it because for the rest of my life, I'll still have to pay property tax. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So am I free of that burden, of that financial burden? No, I'm not because they'll find other ways to try to take that money from me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're not free from, you. like you said, sustaining the lifestyle. We work constantly to make money. They, depending on what state you live in, they can take up to half of your money in taxes. Mm -hmm. With federal, state, then they added what the city, county, whatever tax the taxes that they added. Then at the end of the beginning of the year, they take even more of your money. Mm -hmm. And one more example for me, which really let me know years ago that we weren't technically free, was there was this man living off the grid. He had his own land. Mm -hmm. He paid his taxes off. He paid the property taxes off. Had his own land. Everything was straight. He wanted to live off the grid. He didn't want to be bothered. So what this man did was he made a system to where he grew his own food and he collected rainwater. You know, he had solar energy. He did everything off grid. The government wow. went to his home and said it is illegal 
to collect rainwater. Really? The man, yes. The man was like, what? I'm catching free water out of the sky. Mm -hmm. How was it illegal? They said, oh, it's illegal. You can't do that. Plus, you have to have some type of identification, whether it be water, gas and electric, a cable bill. They tried to make him say he had to have something that identified him as a person of the United States. And wow. you know what they did to him? What? They threw him in jail. They put him really? in jail. They put him in jail mm. for living his life off the grid because he was not giving money to the government. Hmm. So to answer your question, hell no, we not free. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and and to top it off, I'm sorry, but he was white. So yes, wow. We're mm. not we're not free. Mm. Mm. I have another portion where I say, when the melanin in my skin faded, I was special. Because I never would have made it. So that's kind of opening up to the audience about myself. And um, you know how, how I feel about that. Uh, I mean, to be honest, everybody looks at themselves and, and, and they see their imperfections, whether they discuss it or not. They may cringe about it inside. But I choose to embrace it and move forward with it because I realized that's what made me me. You get what I'm saying? Thanks. So I, I felt like I needed to highlight that. And that was the reason that I touched on that and said that in that particular song. But what's your thoughts on that? Embracing your flaws. <laughs> Listen, I'm all for self-actualization, self-awareness. Um, and I was actually thinking about this the other day because there's this um, this woman on Instagram and she has vitiligo. Mm. And I mean, all over her skin. But she got like 700,000 followers. Mm. And it just makes me think back to us as kids. And this is where a lot of this trauma starts. Kids see something that's different and they make fun of it because it's something that they're not used to. Mm. And unfortunately the victims have to go through these issues. But then as we get older, we realize, yo, that makes you special. That makes you different. It makes you unique. And now these people are jealous because people have these unique markers or that disposable trauma has mm. been put away and they don't let it affect them. Um, like for instance, and I'll say, I, I will say I'm not above reproach or I'm not above certain things that I didn't like. Now I didn't make fun of people. Mm -hmm. But it's certain things I turn my nose up at as a kid because, you know, you, you're following the leader. You're following the group or whatever. Um, I liken it to freckles. Mm -hmm. As a kid, you know, freckles like, oh, you got freckles. my cracked on your face or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. But now as an adult, you look at somebody with freckles and you like, yo, that's kind of sexy. Yeah, you know right. I mean, like yeah. you see certain things and it's like it sets them apart from other people. Because, yes, you have people that are good looking and you have people that have great features about them. But a lot of people are good. But certain mm -hmm. other people have certain things. They have this um, distinguishing markers that mm -hmm. I call. Uh, one time, a friend and I were at a mall and we saw this young lady walking through the mall. And from a distance, it was like, oh, my God, you know, she's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Got up on her. I lied to you not, bro. This chick had a scar from here to her ear. Oh, wow. She mm. was like, yeah, my boyfriend got jealous and he took a blade and he sliced me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, you know, after that, dudes don't really holler at me. And wow. do you know And do you know what my friend said to her? What? He said, I will lick your scar every day of your life. Mm. Hmm. He was like, that makes you different. And for me personally, I looked at him like, that's what I'm talking about. You just made somebody's day. You right. know, you took somebody's negative and let them know you like that shit. Like it makes you unique. You're still beautiful just because mm -hmm. you have a star. But growing up, especially us growing up in the 80s, there was a certain idea of perfection. There was a this certain idea of how people had to look. If you right. remember back then being 85 pounds, hmm. you know what I'm saying? That was, right. that was the model. That was the yeah. goal. Mm -hmm. Now they don't want to look like that anymore. Like you right. determine, you determine your own standard of beauty. Don't let nobody tell you nothing. And that's the one thing I will say how hip hop kind of relates to this in a, in a sense, because now in hip hop, 
and I mean, it started a little bit ago, but there was a, a, a shift in a paradigm a little bit. Um, when we were growing up, you know, we had to have certain stuff. You know, we had to have the Jordash, the North Face. Mm -hmm. We had to have certain things. But then it became a time where the kids was like, we're just going to get what looks cool to us. Right. I don't care if you like it or not. I'm going to be me individually. And mm -hmm. I think hip hop helped funnel that because right. they started seeing, especially like Jay-Z himself. Mm -hmm. You know, once once he got to that certain point, he said, you know what? I'm done talking about all that dumb stuff y'all talking about or y'all want me to talk about. I'm going to start telling y'all the real. Right. I'm not doing this no more. And then I think people kind of were drawn to that. And it was like, you're right. I don't have to dress like him mm -hmm. and look like him or have my hair like her. Even right. with us black people, you mm -hmm. know, black women used to have that. They had that, that uh, hot eye. They put on the stove and used to straighten their hair with. Mm -hmm. Now we got women rocking the naturals. They got the curlies. They got the bushes because now we are starting to finally get comfortable with us because with rap, the with the success of rap and hip hop, we're starting to see representation everywhere of us. They're right. starting to put us on cover of magazines. They're mm -hmm. starting to put us as leads in movies and TV shows like they never did before. And we don't have to conform to the way that they want us to look. So I think that is one way that hip hop helped improve our generation for the better. Right. right. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly because I was subject to that. I mean, you know, I remember going to school and they would say, oh, look at your sneakers and stuff like that. And I felt like I had to have the latest whatever. And, right. you know, now I look at it in hindsight just by you saying that we all were broke. We were kids. Nobody Nothing. had money. So so who were we really impressed? You know what I mean? I just feel like it was a conditioning of vows. You know what I mean? Internally. But I agree with what you're saying. I definitely agree with it. Well, for me, you know, I learned I learned firsthand because, you know, I, I forgot how Dave Chappelle said, said it, but we were we were just rich enough to live in a house and be the poorest ones there. You know what I mean? We, we lived yeah. in a nice neighborhood, but we probably were the poorest ones, some of the right. poorest ones in that neighborhood. So I got to see certain things and I learned that a lot of it had to do with other children's insecurities. Mm. You know what I mean? I had this one dude that I see now sometimes from time to time, but his parents were a little bit, he they were a little bit well off. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't stand me because I didn't have stuff. Like I had holes in my shoes. Mm. You know, I had the strings in my pants where they were riding up every time you washed them. But mm -hmm. he couldn't he couldn't understand how people were drawn to me. Mm. All the chicks that he liked were drawn to me. Mm. All of the dudes that he wanted to be friends with were my friends. And he couldn't he couldn't understand why that was because he was like, yo, you don't got it like I got it. Mm -hmm. So why do they want to be with you? And I just think that a lot of it has to do with jealousy and insecurities of other people trying to project it onto the people around them. So, you know, and we all do that stuff like, you know, sometimes we like, uh, you know, you think you hot stuff or whatever. But look at the car you drive it. Right. You know, right. We, we try to we try to make ourselves feel better internally. But. Mm -hmm. What does it matter? Is he getting from point A to point B? Right, right, right. I think one of the things that the biggest thing I had to overcome is being comfortable in my own skin. You know Facts. what I mean? Facts. You know, so just everybody be the best you you could be. You know, it's funny. You know, I we could talk on this topic forever. You know, I know we're talking about hip hop, but right. even look at it in sports. You know, look at how they feel about LeBron. You know, LeBron, will he measure up to Jordan? Why can't he just be LeBron? You get what I'm saying? You Why? know, Why? I get, I, 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 well, I know how you are in the sports world, but. No, I mean, I was, no, 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 no. I wasn't even going to take it to sports, bro. Okay. I was just going to take it. To, I was just going to take it to ego. Mm -hmm. Why can't LeBron be LeBron? Because we all have our favorites. But mm -hmm. as men, we have to be right. So my favorite could be Jordan. Your favorite can be LeBron. Mm. I have to impose my will on you to show you why I'm right, why Jordan's the best. Even though Jordan himself said, yo, we all played in different eras. You have right. a go to this era, you have a go to this era. But me and my ego being so big, I have to put my, I have to put my beliefs on you. And that goes mm. with everything. That goes with mm. everything in life as men. That's why we argue, because I have to think that I'm always right. 
Mm. And if you say something against what I say, I got a problem with you because you're trying to tell me I'm wrong when I know mm. that I'm never wrong. Right. And that's right. why and that's why we have some of the issues that we have. Mm. Well said. Well put. Hell. I'm gonna get into the hook. Even if you ain't failing what I got to say, I could write it, ball it up, and throw it away. Cause I feel like expression piggybacking off of what you said. You know, it, it, the feed, the freedom of expression. You know, we should be able to express ourselves. You know, and, and people take it as just that. Why can't we agree to disagree? You know what I mean? Right. So, I mean, you, you, you beat me to the punch with that one. But I fear you with that. I mean, why can't we agree to disagree? I know we touched on it already, but that was a good segue. You know? I mean, so I that's... Just, it's it's like the East Coast West Coast thing with who's the greatest rapper, Biggie or Tupac. It's the same mm-hmm. thing, you know. Why can't we have two amazing artists in our lifetime? Right. You know what I'm saying? Why can't we just be like, yo, over here he got it locked over here, he got it locked over there. We got two LMCs, but no, right. he's better. He's better. Like it's literally there have been more wars fought on the Biggie versus Pac than it has been LeBron versus Jordan because when it comes to Big and Pac when it comes to Big and Pac Mm -hmm. it's been it's been shootouts it's been fist fight it's been I've seen people at work at a job get into a physical altercation over who's the better MC like you know we just we don't appreciate stuff until it's gone unfortunately Mm. and we don't appreciate stuff until it becomes history Mm. once it becomes history we look back and reflect because right. you know, as grown as grown men now, we look back and reflect on that East Coast West Coast beef, and it's like, yo, that was the stupidest thing in the world. I agree. I agree, and I hate the fact that it happened, but I love the fact that people appreciate it. But I hate the fact that that had to happen for them to appreciate it. Like you said, why why couldn't we just appreciate them then, and and this took it for what it was, you know. Like you said, this is the guy on the east. This is the guy on the west. You know, what if? Mm. What if? But that's a segue to another show that we have coming soon. Stay tuned for that. And what if series? You know, it's almost spooky with the conversation. Because the next line I wanted to talk on is everybody wants smoke, have at it, and so be it. Check that temperature. They ain't hot and don't see. So there's so many ways that 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 could be interpreted. You know, we like we touched on the Biggie and the Tupac. You know, people want to beef. You know, is 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 camaraderie and you know maybe that's not the word I want to use, but it's more like a pissing match. You you get what I'm saying? Right. You know, hey, I, I, I just can't be good and you just can't be good. We can't be great together. You hmm. know what I mean? Thanks. And then the other part of it, which we sort of touched on already as well. Half the time they don't believe it. It could be their entourage. It could be people in that air like, yo, get at them. You know what I mean? And it does not have to be. So, um, you know, we, we talked about it, but uh, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, we kind of touched on it. But. I mean, we did, but you know, even <clears throat> even with the with with the part about being hot and, and they don't know it, there's a lot of people out there that think that they're more than what they are, mm. and it kind of leads them to quote unquote leave people behind. Now, I'm gonna put it to what you just said with this YouTube game. Everybody can be hot in this YouTube game. Mm. We all can bring each other along. Just like in music, you can listen and support more than one person. Absolutely. You know, you can hype and big up more than one artist, more than one group. Like everybody can eat off of this. More right. than one pe- more than one person or group can be hot. It doesn't have to be one. This ain't that movie. Right. This ain't the right. movie. There can only be one. We all can get it. Like my thing is. And you know me, I help anybody. If you ask me for help, I'm doing it. I help push somebody else forward before I help push myself. That's and, an absolute fact. 
And I just think that some of these people have these delusions of grandeur mm. that believe that they're bigger than what they are. And people forget to be humble because in not to take it back. To, well, I don't even have to take it back to sports in music. You have dudes that we've seen that were hotter than fish grease. They the hottest thing out there smoking, doing tours, videos, shows, uh, cameos and movies. And that them up and that them dudes is working in warehouses. Right. right. So you can think that you hot one day. But life will humble you. This is true. This is true. That's why I try my very best to move, you know, in a state of humility. You know, being humble costs you nothing. Hmm. I, don't, I don't know why that's an issue with brothers. You know, I come in peace. Speaking of likes and subscriptions, cost you nothing as well. So you know, hmm. I ain't trying to be cheesy like that. But right, you know, right. if y'all feeling this, you know, liking something, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe. Turn that notification bell on so you know when we come out with new videos so we can keep this going. Because you know what I'm saying? We're doing it for the people. We're not Absolutely. doing it for our health. I'm not trying to right. be, I'm not trying to sound a certain way, but we're doing it for the people. We hope that you like it. That is the reason mm -hmm. we sit up here late at night. No, we got to get up early to go to work. But Absolutely. for the ones that are supporting, salute. Shout out to y'all. We greatly appreciate you. You you know I I I uh it was a line that I was hesitant to discuss because unfortunately in hip hop is 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 happening more than what we care it to happen to. Yep. You know what I mean. But it's a line that I say where we're killing brothers like we don't even need them, and it's sad, but it's so true. You know, are we disposable? You know, I almost feel like we're we're like animals out in the wilderness. You know what I mean? Like like are we moving in the extinction era? Is is that the goal? You know, it it, it, it saddens me, but it, it, it appears like that's what's going on. That's why, you know, again I, I I practice humility. You know, if we could all unite, we're stronger together. You know, violence beget violence. Hopefully we could go in another direction. Would well, yeah. Agree? Yeah, I would definitely agree. Look, we are in in certain rose-colored glasses. We are disposable. Um, we are what some fear. Mm. Our strength, our wisdom... Just our determination to live. We've been put through some of the worst conditions that history has ever known. Mm. And we've come out on the other side. But unfortunately, and some don't agree to this, generations later, we still suffer the psychological effects of what's happened to us before. And even what I said with the music, it goes far beyond that. You know that that uh, crabs in a barrel mentality. Mm. We don't want to see anybody get out and we keep pulling each other down. Right. You know, we kill each other for the dumbest things. And a lot of time, a lot of times that anger isn't even directed toward the person that that violence is committed upon. It's, it's the it's the anger within ourselves, because mm. throughout history, we've been made to feel less than, mm. you know, what I'm saying the world acts like they don't need us, but they do need us. They need us to move forward. Because once mm -hmm. again, when stuff really starts popping off, we'll be the ones in the forefront. Because unfortunately, we're the ones used to kind of towing that line. We're the people that can work out in the field 20 hours a day okay. and not die and not die off. Right. You put any other society in there, they ain't making it. Their organs aren't strong enough. Mm -hmm. But to the rest of the world, we are disposable because they don't know our worth. And unfortunately, and more importantly, we don't know. Hmm. About that. I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this, yeah, this movie about hip hop. I mean, to make this all deep and stuff, but sometimes some things got to be said. And you know, if we had a whole lot more time, I can make I can make correlations to all of this in hip hop. Mm -hmm. The trajectory mm -hmm. that hip hop went from then till now, like we could we could put it all together. But as you say, I digress. Absolutely. But 
That's why this is called disposal. And it's multi-layered because it's all of these things mixed into one. So when you get a chance, check it out. Mr. Galloway on SoundCloud. Disposal. Also check out the Disposable Entertainment, Volume 1 through 3. You may hear something you like. You may feel something you like. You know, earlier we touched on embracing yourself. I have a song about that called The Luxury. You know, the luxury of being you, being comfortable in your own skin. It's funny because I did that song, right? Mm -hmm. And then Beyonce came out. And she has a song similar to it. You know, I'm on social media and all, and they, and, they, and they loving it. You know what I mean? So if you have a sister as beautiful and as powerful as a Beyonce embracing herself and embracing the flaws, we all can do that. You know, so again, you know, just be the best you you could be. And you know, they're my parting words. Any parting words for you, Mr. Hendo? <laughs> yes, I have fun words. Listen, so like my man said, check out his single Disposable. And if you don't have SoundCloud, if you don't have access to it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the description to my live stream from Sunday. It is actually the intro music to my channel. So go down there, check it out. Let us know what you think and what we had to say today. So until next time for me, you know what it be. No doubt. See you next time, world. Peace out.